Hello and welcome to another video of mine. This time, since it's a very slow evening on my server, I'll be showing how to make the tree farm I've been showing in the other videos. This design right here is actually a passive version. I will use this to explain how the basic mechanic works and then we'll go outside to the really implemented tree farm using bone mill. I'll explain the differences but this one will actually use the same idea and you'll ca you can adapt to whatever you need. This also works with passive tree growth. Whenever the sapling grows into a tree naturally it will harvest the tree. But because I don't want to wait that long I'll just use the bone meal to grow a tree. So whenever this timer gives a tick the lowest block will be harvested and it will give a signal starting the machine. This works by deploying some sand on top of the stem and using the piston to push down the wood in front of this harvester. Um, this whole contraption is required because the stem is uh, well does require some free space around it. You can only have blocks directly on the first block but uh, you can't have the other design I've been showing in some of the earlier videos, I think machine use cases, um, because the birch and pine stems will not work and not grow when there's something above or at least close to the stem. So let's dive in and I'll explain how this works. So as you've seen this timer just uh, very slowly every 20 seconds it tries to give a pulse. When there's sapling here the pulse will not reach this uh, repeater but if there is a tree then the wood will somehow conduct the pulse and transmit it to this toggle latch. If you give a pulse on this toggle latch the lever will flip and this timer over here will stop it be, uh, will no longer be blocked and give off ticks. Ticks are delivered to this uh, counter. It will be counting to 10. That's the height of, uh, well, between this deployer over here and the sapling on the ground. It's in this setup 10 above the ground. That's why you use this counter to count to 10. Then, um, well, we want this signal negated. That's a NOT gate and use an AND gate. So whenever we receive a tick from the timer and the counter did not reach 10 yet, we'll give a signal for the deployer and the piston. So the left input here is disabled. So we're actually just using two signals. This one and the one from the timer. The timer also supplies a pulse to the block breaker. That's of course required to actually harvest the blocks. And then there's another counter. This one counts to 20 because we need the uh, block breaker to well, uh, harvest the remaining sand. If we didn't use uh, some additional pulses to harvest the sand that will uh, keep on falling, there would be a pillar of sand remaining and we couldn't plant the new sapling or at least it wouldn't be growing if we could. So to make sure all sand is gone we'll get well 10 additional ticks and this way we can be sure that all the sand is gone and we can replant the sapling. When this 
<clears throat> when this counter reaches 20, it will give a pulse on this wire, repositioning the toggle latch to block this. It will actually revert to this state it's, right it's in right now. It will reset itself. That's why it's important to add a decrement, the size of the maximum count. So it will count in steps of one up, but a single pulse is enough to reset itself into the uh, starting position. It's also resetting this counter. Also decrement has to match the maximum count. And it will give a signal to the de deployer telling it, uh, well, everything is harvested, just plan a new sapling. That's basically all. I'll show you the mechanic above. It's pretty simple. There is sand in the deployer like this. Um, you would actually only only require 10 sand, but uh, Minecraft being Minecraft, being on an SMP server, it sometimes loses sand. I don't know why. Um, if you do, please tell me. I don't know. Sometimes uh, I lose some sand and I can't explain why. So, whenever we get the signal from the end gate, that's uh, we didn't count to 10, and we have a signal pulse from the timer, there's a short delay. Um, the, it's just required so the block breaker has time to actually harvest the block that's on the bottom. Then we deploy a sand and up there there's another delay. After deploying the sand we'll push the sand one down. The next tick will be deploying another sand pushing that down. And that's basically the whole tree farm. So this is the control room of the tree farm I've been showing in the videos. This one is using bone meal. As you can see the circuitry is the same as in the shop I've been showing. The yellow wire gives the signal to sand deployment, the cyan wire is for block breaker operation and the green wire will deploy the sapling and use bone meal on it. This part is well new or different because I'm using bone meal in this case. It's just a simple timer going onto this toggle latch. The first tick will toggle the latch and deploy um, the sapling and use bone meal on it. The next tick will give a short pulse through this pulse former, which will toggle this latch and disable this timer and in turn enable this timer through that latch. This will start harvesting the, the tree and as you can remember this counter, when this gives the signal, it will stop harvesting through toggling this latch. It will enable that, that latch, which will enable planting again, if it's not blocked like it is currently. So, as you can see, it's currently not operating. If I toggle the master switch, it will plant, toggle and enable this one and also the green light will be on. So the trees will grow and sand will be deployed to push it down into the block breakers. It will give quite a lot of wood in a very short amount of time. As you can see it's very efficient. It's only using uh, one bone meal per tree. That's quite good. So um, as, as I said color coded yellow is sand deployment and block breaker operation and well tree ha tree planting the white one is for bone meal but it's just a simple uh, short delay between those two wires underground i built this water slide so the water current can collect all the falling saplings and just uh, 
I'll push them into that transposer, which will feed it back into the appropriate deployer. This way you will never have to resupply saplings. It will produce more saplings than you actually need to operate this farm. So it doesn't matter. Sometimes a sapling will just stay on the tubes or the deployers. It's no matter because it will just despawn sometime, but as you can see there are quite a lot of saplings from each cycle and there are more than you need. So you could, I don't know, use them to operate some furnaces, the excess ones. Well, that's the tree farm. And, well, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and are ready to build your own.